What's up, guys? And welcome to another episode of Big Kid with Will Bryant. I'm your host. I'm Will Bryant. <sighs> I don't know if it's the fact that it's been raining, like, nonstop for a week. It feels like even longer than that. Um, but I am a little feeling a little gloomy today. A little down in my dumps, I guess. Could it be something so silly as weather that that can just control my emotions like that? That that would be I mean, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I'm overtly happier when it's like sunny outside sometimes but also not really i mean like if i have to go to work on a beautiful day while everyone else gets to enjoy it sometimes that can be <laughs> that can be depressing too ah oh, i don't know i don't know if it's just the the weather the cuz it's been really rainy and i mean like so last weekend it was raining all weekend but then this weekend it's it it said hold my beer the rain saw last week and said, hold my beer. As I drink my beer. Hold, speaking of beer, I was drinking Heineken Lights yesterday. That could also be it, too, by the way. Drank so much yesterday that I feel like shit today. But I'm going to ignore that. No, it's it's the weather. Okay? It's not that... It's not that drinking... Um, It's not that one of the side effects of drinking... And getting drunk the next day is uh, depression and anxiety. No, it's not that. It's the weather. And that's what we're going to focus on here is the weather and nothing else. Cheers. Because on this show, I think I might need a shot of tequila. Ah, on this show, Big Kid with Will Bryant. I'm your host, I'm Will Bryant. We're all about not being adults. Not facing our problems head on, not accepting responsibility for anything in our lives. See, a real big kid accepts zero responsibility and ignores all the bad things in his life that he doesn't want to take care of. So how about cheers to that? Thank you, James. Or that shot of El Tesoro. So yeah, it wasn't the fact that, you know, I drank a good amount last night or yesterday and um, did a little tequila yesterday. No, no, no. It wasn't that. It's the fact that water is falling from the sky. That is what is making me feel all bleh. Blah, blah, blah. So, indulge me as I uh, continue to live in denial. Not only am I living in denial, now I'm also podcasting in denial. But hey, you know, whatever gets you through this so-called thing. I mean, this thing. What is it? My so-called life? Fuck! Episode's ruined already. That was a good show, My So-Called Life. You guys seen that? No? Cool. Let's move on. Uh, I was drinking this thing called Heineken Silver yesterday. What if it was just my body's like, I don't recognize this, so it's going to take us a while to get used to it. And that's why today I'm like, nah, fuck my life. Um, Heineken Silver apparently is... Uh, I, I had to look it up because I had no idea what it was, but I didn't care. I was drinking it. Um... It was, uh, I think it's lower per uh, alcohol by volume than a Heineken. This right here that I'm drinking is a uh, 5%, I believe. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, 5% alcohol by volume. And I like to turn the volume all the way up. Um, so the Heineken, that was stupid. Heineken Silver is 4% by volume. And I believe I read earlier today... If I remember the numbers correctly, it's like three carbs or some shit like that. 90 calories, three carbs, something like that, which is uh, less carbs than a Heineken light. It might even be a little bit more alcohol by volume, too, but I'm not positive on that. Either way, did the job. 
I drank them at a um, uh, me someone who doesn't give a damn about NYCFC. I was at the NYCFC like supporters. Uh, I forgot what they called it, but it was like a watch party because it was supposed to be NYCFC taking on Lionel Messi, but in true fashion to anything I try to do, Lionel Messi did not play. So, um, you know, not only that, but the game was, even though the game was like in Miami, that shit was rain delayed too. It's raining everywhere. Um, so it was rain delayed. I thought that shit started at six. The game wasn't, didn't start till like eight. And then it didn't start even later because of the rain delay. And I was already like three sheets to the wind drinking. By the way, I looked up what three sheets to the wind means. And I think I forgot what it meant already. So why did I even mention that? I think it has something to do with sailing a boat. Like, um, huh. I think when you put up the sails, the three sails, that's when you're like in the roughest. You do that when you're like in the roughest uh, part of like the wind or something like that, the journey. Let's see. I'm an idiot. Why would I only I would bring up the fact that I looked something up and then reveal that I have zero ability to memorize any new knowledge or information to the wind. To be three sheets to the wind is to be drunk. The sheet is the line that controls the sails on a ship. If the line is not secured, the sail flops in the wind and the ship loses headway and control. If all three if all three sails are loose, the ship is out of control. <laughs> I swear the next like four questions are what does four sheets to the wind mean? What does eight sheets to the wind mean? What does seven sheets to the wind mean? And what does ten sheets to the wind mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, and by the way, they all just mean very drunk. <laughs> Four sheets to the wind means extremely drunk. Eight sheets to the wind means he's staggering drunk. Um, seven sheets to the wind means very drunk. And ten sheets to the wind means someone who is drunk to the point of being unable to stand up straight. I love that there's just random uh, definitions for X amount of sheets to the wind. Well, that was a lot of sheets to the wind, but not that many. I've been way more sheets. I was a moderate amount of sheets to the wind last night. Let's say that. Moderate amount of sheets to the wind. Um, I mean, I made it home already, you know. <laughs> and I made it home kind of early, too. I did not stay up. I left in the first half. I was uh, like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm... See, I knew I had work the next day, and I knew I was already, like, pretty drunk. And I was like, man, I just... I don't got it in me to stay for the whole game. I think it ended in a tie. So, pfft, dang. Girl, that, so, I didn't get to see a rainy Lionel Messi-less 1 or 0-0-1-1 zero, zero, one, one draw or whatever it was for a team I don't even care about. Well, darn. Really missed out on that one. I am... Um, God, I'm looking at myself in... Uh, on the video right now and my beard is so like it, it really looks thick on camera and i think now i'm like i knew it, it was long but jesus see i'm not trying trying to like grow it out on purpose it's not like it it's october and i um decided oh let's all let's get all burly man and shit although now that it's this long i might as well but truth be told my trimmer is fucking busted I swear, I, I've plugged that into two or three different outlets and it just doesn't charge. So I, I have no choice but to fucking grow this beard out. I just ordered one on Amazon today. So it's funny. I ordered one and it said it was going to arrive Tuesday and I canceled it and I ordered another one that would arrive tomorrow because I'm like, I need help. Man. It's not. I'm not even going to take too much of the length off, but I got to control it a little bit. And my mouth, my, my lip is like getting, first of all, I, I'm not used to it. So I, I scratch, you know, you like that beard ASMR. I bet like half of you guys are like, ah, half the time on the show, I have beer drinking ASMR. Now I'm going to have beer drinking and beard ASMR. So mm, whatever. Yeah. But this beard, um, 
like my nose is all it gets like all tingly from my like i don't know i like just feel like itchy all around my mouth sometimes <laughs> and of course now that i say it now that i say it so yeah the rain the rain um last weekend i had off from work on a sat off saturday and sunday that's the first time that's happened in like years i don't remember the last time that's happened where i didn't have to ask off for the weekend and i got it off from a job in the industry i mean in the in the hospitality industry we work we work when everyone else has off you know uh so yeah, I uh, I had Saturday, Friday, and, no, not Friday. I had Saturday and Sunday off, and um, and then Val was uh, said that her her like family friends are going to uh, Long Island for like an apple picking weekend, and I'm not gonna lie. Initially, I was like, oh, in my head, I was like, oh, I was looking forward to just doing nothing, but I was like, ah, you know what? I haven't had the weekend off in a while. Might as well do something. Might as well take advantage of it. And of course, it rained the entire weekend. Pretty much. However, I will say that even though it was a rainy weekend, I was kind of prepared for it to be a rainy weekend. It, it was, I actually enjoyed it. I think it was good for, you know how they say chicken soup for the soul? It was a little bit of that. I just went out to Long Island. I did realize one thing. I could never live out there. It wasn't just like Long Island. It wasn't just like Nassau County. I think we were like by Southampton. Um, so it's out there, you know? It's where every every little town is called a port. Like port something port. Port Miss Port Myths. Portsville. St. James Port. Everything's a port because everything's by water. Every every vineyard is port vineyards, vineyard ports. The vineyard vines of ports, vines, port vines. Um, but it was a, uh, it was it was nice to like just, you know, get away for a little while. Um, I hate so much. Oh my god, I we had these like oh, I never realized that I didn't know the difference between like an open face pie and a I guess closed pie. I don't know. But man, is open face pie the way to go, in my opinion? That we had some ridiculous pies out there. Um, that had like a mountain of strawberries. We had one. What was it? Was it a coconut custard pie? I don't even know, dude. We didn't even cut them up into slices and distribute them like civilized people. We just sat around, like seven of us, just sat around a table with forks in our hands. And just tore this pie to, to like bits, like jackals, dismantling a prey. Zero shame, too. I was all about it. It was really good. Um, Most of the food we had that weekend was really good. Uh, I remember we went out to this restaurant. Now, here's the thing. With the uh, people that invited us to this trip are... Way more uh, successful than than me and Val. So um, it was like one of those trips where it's pretty much understood that they're paying for like most of it. Um, there was only like once or twice that I reached that I, I even had to reach for my wallet. And even, even then it was a, a little bit of a friendly battle. Um, but yeah, I have no shame in admitting like way way more successful you know you know when you're with people that are just like like they know it too but like you're, it's not like they pity you but they're the the things we talk about like they talk about um the private school that their kids go to and you know putting together water polo highlight videos so that Brown University can scout you, you know, like that's what their conversations are about. And it's like, well, how about you? And I was like, oh, you know, um, I fell asleep on the A and woke up in Far Rockaway last week. You know, that happened, by the way. Very few worse places to wake up asleep than Far Rockaway. Nothing against Far Rockaway, but everything against Far Rockaway's location. You guys are 
fucking out there. And if you don't know, like, look at the subway map and then f- go all the way to the bottom right hand corner that you never use. That's far Rockaway. It, it goes out further into a little fucking island. And and it's it's so far out that they don't even bother naming the streets like something. It's all B five like B fifty five or whatever. They have, probably have ports too, port five. I woke up and I did not. I saw code on on. I I tried to see what stop I was on, like you know, a regular name or two fifty fifth street. No, it's a it's a like a, a binary code. It's like B520110. Like, what the fuck? Where am I, dude? I I got out in a panic. I smelled just salt water. I hold that's never good, dude. For a dude that lives in Bushwick, Brooklyn. For a dude that grew up in Queens, New York, like Jackson Heights and Flushing, if you get off the train. If you fall asleep and get off of the subway and you smell fucking ocean, bro, that's a problem. You don't ever want to fucking fall asleep on the subway and smell the ocean. What the hell? Salt in my nose. That's when I knew I fucked up, man. Fucking far rock away, dude. I live in Bushwick and I ended up in Far Rockaway. Ah. The ocean. When I got in the Uber, I was just like, oh God, just take me away from water, dude. Yeah, these people that we that invite us out to Long Island, they're not falling asleep and waking up in no fucking far Rockaway. No, they're too good for them. They're too, you know, mature, uh, responsible, um, you know, living life correctly, that type of stuff. They're too much of that. I do none of that. I'm irresponsible. Uh, definitely not living life correctly. Uh, incorrectly I'm excelling at the incorrect stuff in life That's what I'm That's your boy right here um, Besides that They are Yeah way like killing it Anyways We go on this trip with them And it was just a nice little uh <clears throat> Nice little disconnect, even though it was raining all the time. We actually went um, apple picking on like the day after we got there, and it was raining earlier, and then only kind of drizzling when we went. We literally went apple picking in like a drizzle. Like <laughs> that's how determined we were to pick some apples, and it wasn't bad. We po- we we chose the exact moment to go um, where we wouldn't get super wet and drenched or whatever <laughs> at one point the little girl that was with us um <laughs> she's she was like all pouty because i guess she didn't want to go apple picking in that weather and i don't i don't blame her <laughs> but she said so she said uh i <laughs> through her tears she said i don't want to go apple picking in this state <laughs> and see i I kind of took that as a very intelligent sentence. I was like, wow, does she mean like in this state of, of weather, you know, in this state of environment or whatever, but everyone else took it as the state geographically. And they were like, Oh, what state would you rather pick apples in, you know, Massachusetts. And I kind of wanted to stand up for the girl at that moment and be like, I think possibly, she actually just used a really intelligent sentence for like a five-year-old. I think she's four. I don't know. Yeah, we bought uh, we bought um, the older brother who's play, who does actually play water polo. Water polo, by the way, like you guys realize that. It, when you're swimming around that entire that pool, trying to throw that ball into a net, the entire time they're treading water, their feet aren't touching the floor. Like that's got to be so tiring. 
I I remember uh, thinking that like synchronized swimming and like water dancing was was I don't know kind of lame, and then I realized that they have to tread water the entire. They're like in the deepest part of the pool doing that, you know. And you're doing so you're just treading water that entire time. That takes it out of you, man. So there's a lot of cardio going into that. A lot of calories burned. Um, but yeah, we bought them. A, I bought the Amazon, of course, has water polo shirts because they have everything. And um, we got them this like carry bag, like a bag to carry stuff in that said what happens under the water stays under the water. And, and then a, a T-shirt that says dominate or drown, which I thought was actually pretty appropriate for, for a kid that's like part Russian. So oh, actually, he might be full Russian. So, um, <laughs> at one point they, he told me that the, the bag makes sense cause there's a lot of weird stuff that happens under the water to which I was infinitely interested in what he was talking about. And apparently they're just constantly hitting each other on the, uh, on the balls. They're constantly just cup checking each other on the, under the water. So it's nice to know that 20 years later, 15, 16 year olds are still doing the same dumb shit. It's just regardless of any sport because i definitely remember being on a football team and being cup what's called cup checked first of all i remember being in high school walking to class and being cup checked and why the fuck would you be wearing a cup on your way to class obviously you're not gonna have a cup but every time it was just a free punch to the balls and football it at least made sense cup check here a little click i used to have the most fucking cocky smile because i always wore my cup i was a little bitch no way Fuck your cup checks. We went to this winery and it was the same exact winery that I had gone to like the year prior um, for my friend Monica's birthday. That was pretty. The odds of that, I thought, were pretty. Oh, speaking of odds, I definitely drank like four wines and got pretty drunk. But speaking of odds, I I go to Long Island for one weekend this year. We go to like one place to have. Well, we go to two places for brunch that weekend. One of the places for brunch that we go to on a sa- on the Saturday. I'm there and some some chick that works there comes up to me. And she goes, hey, you you have like you look really familiar. Like, do I know you from somewhere? And I swear, dude, it took everything for me to not be like, well, I have a podcast, you know, you must follow me on Instagram. I'm Will Bryant. Oh, my God, I knew it. My Val was standing right there, and when I said that to her, she was like, "Oh my god!" I thought for a second, no way, maybe you know, like it happened. No, no, no. But I, I had we went to the. I was like, "No, I don't know." I wanted to, dude. If you've ever met a brown skinned dude with long hair and a beard, then you think you've met me. That's just that's just the way it is. You know who people um, think, like, for a second I am? You know that dude on Instagram? He has a, a, an account called Creative Explained, and he's just doing hacks, like, life hacks all day. He's like, he's like I'm going to do my, I'm trying to do my impression of him. His hair is always a little wild. And he gets, like, right into the camera. And he's like, hey, you can throw out those avocado shells? Don't do that. Hold on to them. And then the camera goes like, Phew! And then he has avocado shells in his hand. And he's like, you keep these avocado shells. And then you put them under the ground. And then fucking suddenly a a fucking avocado tree is growing in his backyard. And he's like, you grow an avocado and you get all these from just avocado shells. So next time you eat an avocado, don't throw out the shells. Keep them, grow them in your backyard and you get a tree. And then this dude is now like millions of followers and has his own hack book. And he's on the Today Show. And people... I've had people like show me his page and be like, bro, is this you? And I'm like, really? If that was me, would I? Wow, my hair is all fucking wild right now. I was like, if that was me, would I be shaking this fucking mojito for you? Would I? No, not mojito. Would I? If that was me, dude, would I be shaking these goddamn espresso martinis for you guys, for you four people right now? No, absolutely not. I feel like one day I'm going to meet that dude and we're going to do a video together. Watch. I'm manifesting that. 
I've had this idea for a while. I'm just going to leave my hair like this for a while. Fuck it. <laughs> I've had this idea for a while to do like a parody video of, of that dude and just give like life hacks of uh, of things that just don't work at all or go horribly wrong and just pretend that it, it it's what I meant to do. Just one of many things that I've thought of doing and just never did. I'll do that though. Uh, oh yeah, so <laughs> so I I get recognized at this brunch shop, but I I go back, I sit down, and I'm like just, I can't let it go. I'm like, Mike, I think I do know her, and then I start going through um, Instagram and I look through my friend uh, my friend Adam's page. Adam is my yeah my best friend's cousin uh, Keith. And I, I'm I'm looking dead at pictures of him and his girlfriend, and I'm still not sure if it's her. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I think I don't know. And so we uh we had had we I, I ended up DMing Adam, and I'm like, Yo, does your girl? Because here's the thing, I know that Adam lives by Stony. Oh my god, I'm like messing around with my hair so much. It's so long. Anyways, I know that Adam lives. Around the Stony Brook area Because he used to visit me and Keith at college all the time And I'm like We're not near Stony Brook We're like an hour deeper Than Stony Brook University And Stony Brook Long Island So This is a little deep for Someone that lives in that area But I, I texted him I was like hey by, by the way Or by any chance that your girl works at and I forgot that it was probably Portsville Smith, uh, you know, brunch deli. Oh, actually, it was somewhere where Albert Einstein used to live. I remember, I know that because they built something called Einstein Square with a uh, like bronze bust of Einstein, and he said that he used to have like live in the house that, that the place was connected to. So whatever spot is by Einstein Square. Um. And he was like, holy shit, yeah, she, whoa, yeah, she does work there. Why? And I'm like, I, I'm like, that makes sense. I just ran into her. And so I, I go up, I go back up to my fan that recognized me and I show her a picture of me and Keith and Adam at the, at Keith's wedding just last year. Cause me and Adam were in the wedding party for Keith, who, um, I mean, we, you know, we, we planned the bachelor party. We did the bachelor party for him. We did the wedding. Oh, we were at the wedding. We were part of his, we were his groomsmen. So yeah, we were together like the whole, for like a, a whole weekend basically. And she saw that picture of us three and immediately was like, oh, of course. But here's the thing. Like, it makes sense. Cause we didn't spend that much time like together. I was with uh, Keith and Adam uh, and all the groomsmen uh, for, the majority of that wedding day, uh, I remember telling Val, who had never been to a, an actual wedding before, so that was a cool experience to see her like experience a wedding for the first time, and an awesome wedding, such a fun wedding that was. But I told her, I was like, so normally at a wedding, like you would be with your date the whole time, but this is a little different because I'm in the wedding party. I was like, I was very happy that my other friends James and Jane were going. So I was like, essentially, you're going to spend a lot of time with James and Jane because I'm going to be off with them, like taking pictures at some location far away and, you know, like hours before while you're still getting ready. And then, you know, like I might see you for like a cocktail hour or something like that. It won't be like till the actual reception that, that we'll be able to actually chill. And that's ended, that's what ended up happening. Um, so I... I didn't meet Adam's girl till like the reception. And by then three, four sheets to the wind, probably. <laughs> cause I, cause you know that I made sure to bring a case of beer on that limo with us while we uh, went on this photo shoot. I remember Keith was like, nah, don't worry. Like, the limo's going to be stocked. And, like, we got there, and there was, like, one bottle of champagne, which we killed in one shot. And Keith just looked at me like, that was a good call. Because <laughs> we you drank and drank and drank. Um, so, yeah, I didn't... I met her, like, at the reception once I was already pretty drunk. Um, and 
you know, I, by then I had spent hours and hours with the guys, which was such a good experience too, by the way. We had so much fun. For his bachelor party, we took Keith to um, Madison Square Garden. Uh, first of all, uh, we bought a, a hotel or stayed at a suite at the Marriott in Times Square and uh, went to Madison Square Garden and did a uh, floor level for Swedish House Mafia. That was fun. When walking into Madison Square Garden and just walking to the floor. Like not having to go up any escalators, showing your ticket and just being moved along through every freaking, you know, stop. I mean, I swear people smile. The the, the people that work there smiled at us differently. That's what it felt, man. Uh, that was fun. That was a good time. So yeah, I spent so much time with Adam and, and the rest of the guys that I, it wasn't until the reception that really that I finally met his girl. Um, I actually, I met her at the, the rehearsal dinner the night before. Um, and then again, it saw her again at the reception, but yeah, I saw, I was with Adam more than I was with like my own girl. It felt like sometimes my girl, my girl was the third wheel with James and Jane. <laughs> that was also the weekend. Me and Val were the first people, um, I guess outside of their family, the first one of their friends to know that Jane was pregnant. That was crazy. I remember that. Um, <laughs> I remember they picked us up to, again, go to Long Island for a weekend. And um, James uh, was already, like, waiting with a joint. like, And we were smoking a joint. And Jane is just as big a pothead as us. And uh, she doesn't come out to smoke with us. And I'm like, hmm, something's afoot. What's up? And James is just like, oh, she's sick. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. And then I we finished the joint and um I we we get into the car and the moment I get into the car Val just goes Jane's pregnant and I was like what the f oh that's why she didn't smoke <laughs> and James was like oh I didn't know if we were gonna, gonna tell them right away <laughs> that was a fun weekend with James and Jane because <laughs> we've I don't know if we've ever Googled um. <laughs> Literally googling How much is it okay to drink When you're like two or three months pregnant <laughs> <For watching. laughs> um, We always like looked We always paid attention to whichever website Had the largest amount <laughs> it was Like one would say like one glass of champagne And the other one would be like one to three And we'd be like that's probably That sounds like the more reputable site Is the <laughs> Oh man, me and James would be smoking and she would just stand next to us. She'd be like, I just want to smell it. <laughs> oh, she's so fucking awesome. Um, so I ran into the fucking, yeah, this all comes back around. I ran into Adam's girl at a random fucking Einstein brunch spot, which, by the way, excellent coffee. Um, of like all places And I'm like Holy shit and I send the, the We took a picture together And I sent it to, to Adam And to Keith And they were both like What the fuck What the fuck are you even doing out there I don't you, Hey That's what happens When you have people You know people with money That we get to just Have free weekends In places Um <laughs> We bought some So much food Oh I saw the You know What I realized Is like I my um like level of i don't know cri criticism i'm trying to find the right verbiage here i judge movies so much more forgivingly nowadays man i used to be the guy that only liked watching like critically acclaimed stuff um very uh not so much about like Rotten Tomato ratings, but just, you know, like it had to be something respected or reputable. You know, I like I tried to watch a lot of the movies that were in the um, the race for for film, best film of the year, stuff like that. That was me a couple of years ago. 
as I pour another little shout out to Soro here. Um, and honestly, the pandemic happened. And I mean, I lost my job. Cheers. And I felt I was feeling so down that uh, I did not want to watch anything remotely thought provoking, man. So I swear, I think the first thing I did, I had never seen any John Wick movie. I think the first thing I did was watch all three. Well, at the time, there were three John Wick movies in a row. Just bang, bang, bang. And I was like, that was perfect. That was excellent. Um, Thank you. And then I was like, what else? What else is like this? And I... I realized that I had not seen every Fast and Furious movie. In fact, I hadn't seen like at that time there was I think eight, and that I hadn't I hadn't seen oh eight in a spinoff I think. And I think I had only seen like four of them or something like that. But I knew that it was like a this long, epic. You know, franchise now. That keeps characters and brings back characters. So I was like, let me start from the beginning. And I st- I watched Fast and Furious 1 and Too Fast, Too Furious and Tokyo Drift and all of them in a row, including the spinoff uh, Hobbs and Shaw. And I was just so blindly entertained and distracted from all the bullshit of the pandemic that I, I, from that, from that day to this day, I, I became a huge, huge fan of the Fast and Furious franchise. Um, fully understanding by the way, that it's like peak blockbuster popcorn, mindless entertainment. And that's why I love it. That's why I, that's exactly what I needed it to be for me. At that moment, so I, I, you will never see me disparage that franchise or the or the great Vin Diesel. Um, I get super excited when those movies come out, man. Val Val can barely take me when 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 a Fast and Furious movie is out. I once saw one. Of, I think I I mentioned it on an episode. I saw one of those movies in the fucking chairs that move all four D and shit. I best experience of my life. Best experience of my life. Um, oh, why did I say that? Because I know now beyond a shadow of a doubt that my, um, uh, my, my harshness in judging movies is pff, at an all time low because I saw the machine starring Burt Kreischer on Netflix and I fucking loved it. I, uh, was laughing and maybe it's because I saw it with like my Russian girlfriend and her Russian friend, uh, family friend or whatever. Like they just kept pointing out like all the not like how bad some of the Russian is and, and like how it doesn't look like Russia. And I get it. I get that now every time because I'm, I'm with a, someone Russian every time there's some Russian character on film. I just turn to her and I go good or bad. Authentic or not authentic? By the way, um, Black Widow, like, God, she was like, this is some of the worst Russian shit I've ever seen in my life. You know? It broke my heart when we watched Rocky IV, and she was like, mm, this is, the, the Russian here is fucking bullshit. It's terrible. And I was like, no! Not Drago. Same thing in Creed Two. When when Drago comes back with his son, bro, I was all into just whatever movies at this point. Creed two, hell yeah. Mm. But yeah, the machine. It's on Netflix. Probably not the best, but shit, it was good enough for me. Ate so much. <laughs> I remember uh, hearing. The story of, um, I think it was, uh, someone was with Joe Rogan. It might've been like Andrew Schultz and a bunch of like their friends, I think. And 
and Joe took him out to a uh, a steakhouse. And Joe Rogan orders like a tomahawk steak, which is like the most expensive item on the menu. And that uh, Andrew Schultz and everyone else ordered like the second most expensive thing, except for one friend of theirs that said, yeah, I'll do one of those. And they ordered the same exact thing as Joe Rogan. And everybody looked at him like, oh, what the fuck? Because they didn't want to be douchebags and order the most expensive item on the menu. Now, Joe Rogan's so rich that when they told him the story, Joe was like, your friend was right. He got the, he should order the best steak. Fuck, the fuck are you talking about? But I had this story in my head when we went out to a dinner uh, this weekend in Long Island. And um, it was kind of pricey, dude. Some of these steaks were like $58, $60. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm not ordering that. I'm not, or there's no way I'm ordering um something $58 on a menu and letting someone else pay for that. Like, no way. That's so, that would be so ballsy of me. I went way down. I chose something that was like 20 something dollars. I was like, yep, yep, this is good. This is fine. <laughs> Not about to make, fucking make someone pay for it. And, and I swear if I did do that, they were like sweethearts the whole weekend, but I bet you they'd go home and be like, can you believe he ordered the fucking $58 steak? <laughs> um, on the way back, we bought uh, these donuts, but I was most excited about uh, milk that we bought from a farm that like came straight from a cow, basically. It was, uh, it had like stuff in it, you know, like I was like, what is that? And I'm like, I'm guessing this is just what real milk looks like when it's not, I don't know, processed and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, I drank like that whole thing of milk to myself with just bread and cheese, which was also from the farm. <laughs> Dude, milk. <laughs> this sounds dumb Milk I always have this one Specific Childhood memory About milk Um, I guess two But like one is just that for some reason As a baby I really Or not a baby but like Like as a young young boy Like maybe two three four years old I liked like milk with sugar I don't know if that was really healthy, but anyways, um, my my biggest, my most, uh, the memory that stands out most for me when I think of milk, and trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> I was on um, CYO basketball. For for people that don't know what CYO basketball is, it's um, if you went to Catholic school in in New York. Their basketball league was called CYO. I don't know why. I, 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 maybe it was a Christian youth organization. I just made that up. That, that's probably exactly what it is, but I don't know. CYO basketball. I mean, fuck it. Let's look it up. We have we have Google now, right? CYO. There you go. CYO basketball. Pops up. Registration is closed for this year, by the way, if you were wondering. Holy Spirit Youth Ministry. Now just give me a Wikipedia of CYO basketball. I typed that so badly. Put like a K and a V in there. What the hell is wrong with me? What does it stand for? What was the reason? I just want to know what CYO is. Catholic, you go, what are you saying? Oh my God, I was right. Oh my God, dude. I was, I was right. Further proof that I'm always right. Catholic Youth Organization. Anyways, so I was in CYO basketball, which basically just meant if you could pay, you could play. And my mom paid, so I played. It wasn't really that good, but I played. Um, and I remember one year, my friend that was more of a soccer player, his mom was like, you should play basketball with Will. And he was like, no, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how. <laughs> and she was like, I don't care. You should just do it. And for one season, I played for like a while. I played from like... I don't know, third grade all the way to like eighth grade. You know, I, my mom paid every year. 
check after check after check. So I was on the team year after year after year, warming that bench like a motherfucker. Man, I got so good at setting picks. <laughs> that was my claim to fame. <laughs> Actually, not a bad rebounder, but that's just because I saw Dennis Rodman talk about like how re- or someone was talking about Dennis Rodman saying like how he's not the biggest or strongest, but he just knows that he can't really do anything else besides that. So he does that to the like most. So I kind of like, I was really big into the Bulls at the time. So I was just really, I, I prided myself on just diving on the floor for every rebound. Dude. I, to the point where I gave myself, like I busted my lip open. Not even during a game. I already talked about that, but anyways. Um, so this friend of mine that plays uh, soccer mostly. He's the same friend that, like, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how um, his dad, like, bought him, like, a used stereo and or boombox, and in it was Jay-Z's fucking um, volume two. So this kid, he's on the, on the basketball squad with me this year, and, um, <laughs> and for some reason... He, we're like just drinking from our water bottles and he he just says he starts talking about how he loves milk like first i don't know why he just decided to start talking about i i love milk and that and i was like yeah i like it too and he got like competitive with me about it he was like no i really love it like i love it so much that next game I'm going to bring milk in my water bottle instead of water. And I was like, okay, dude, like you win. You definitely love milk more than me because I would never do that. But all right, go ahead. I remember thinking like, whatever, neither one of us plays enough for it to really matter. Like if the star player drank milk for an entire game instead of water, we would probably see a difference in his performance, you know? For us, what are we going to do? Just sit on the bench worse? He said that. And I forgot about it. And then a week passes by, and we're at our game, and I, I forgot if it was that I ran out of water or I just didn't have, I don't know. I was actually playing, and I needed water. Maybe it was just that I wasn't near my bottle, so I just reached out, and he tossed me his. And I drank it, like, during a timeout listening to the coach, and I remember just going, Pfft. And I just look at him, and I'm like, the fuck is this? And he goes, I told you, I love milk. (laughs) This motherfucker really put milk in a water bottle for a fucking basketball game. I'm talking about four quarters, bro. Not like a pickup game at the park. Bro, we were in uniform, indoors. Hard court, hardwood court. Playing with 12 kids. Our coach subbing us in and out. And this motherfucker put milk in a water bottle. The fuck? I liked having him on the team because he was like the one person that would get less playing time than me. So I felt like I was, I felt like I got better, even though all we really did was add one more worse person. I felt good. Oh, you know, going back to this Long Island trip, the, I learned the most, the most interesting moment of the entire trip happened um, in a final brunch on the drive back. We left the Airbnb and we stopped off at one last Long Island ass place with like local ass food. And we, um, I swear the most interesting part of the entire weekend happened. So the guy, the, the, you know, it's a, it's a, we were out there with a husband and wife with their, their two kids and, um, their uncle was with us for a portion of the trip. He had to leave early. And the husbands, I told you, they're way more successful than us and probably most of you. <laughs> He's uh, like some type of like uh, computer science uh, engineer type of dude or whatever. Like at one point in, in during brunch, he he just 
described how easily it actually is to build an EMP. <laughs> I was like, wow, that doesn't sound like something that, that I should just be able to. Like, really? It is? Like, oh, okay. Um, Like, he could literally just put something together that would just disrupt everyone's cell phones and, and laptops in, in, in the entire block. And he's like, it's, it's actually quite easy. <laughs> um, That's not the interesting thing, though. That's whatever. Here's the interesting thing, is that um, at one point during this brunch... His son, well, his stepson, I guess, um, says, he just throws it out there, all blasé. Like, oh, you know, he uh, he invented the yellow line in football. And I, like, laughed. And I was like, what? And I look at this guy, and he's, like, all humble. He's like, well, like, I was a part of a team. And I said, hold the fucking phone here. What? I didn't know I was in the presence of greatness. What a thing. He was a part. So he, he ended up, he, I, I had to, I, I, for this entire trip, I was very like, you know, polite. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. That's nice. You know, just listening to everybody talk this moment. I said, hold up. Everybody stop. You were involved with the yellow line in football. Now, for you guys that don't know, first of all, do better. Know things. But what we're talking about here, and it's apropos because it is football season. In fact, football is going on right now. I'm so stupid. I recorded this so late in the week that I'm recording this during football. What am I doing? But I got to put this show out on a weekly basis and this is the price I pay. In football, when you watch football on TV, a team has to get 10 yards to get a first down. And on TV, they show you how far they have to go to get that first down by putting a bright yellow line across the field so that the viewer has a clear frame of reference for where that ball has to go. And believe it or not, that line and the technology to put that line on your TV screen had to be invented. And I just so happened to spend the weekend with a man involved in the invention of said yellow line. So I grilled him, you know. He used to work for a company called Princeton Video Imaging, PVI. And the way that this all even came to be was originally, it was all about advertisement. See, he told me that they were experimenting with the ability to put images on the screen during live broadcasts. And the benefit of this would be to advertise on a broader scale. And here's the example he gave me. He said, if you're watching a tennis game, and there are advertisements along the outside, but it's, you know, they're playing Wimbledon, and some of the advertisements work stronger in... Europe than they would in America. Well, what if on a live broadcast you can display more centered or focused advertisements to England while showing more American advertisements to your American feed? 
In fact, we're seeing it now, kind of. If you look at baseball games, they have advertisements behind the batter that actually change from inning to inning. So there's probably just a green screen back there. And they're able to change the advertisement by inning. That's kind of a similar thing he was talking about. It was just all about trying to change advertising. And then they used that same technology that they were working on and said, well, what if we weren't advertising anything at all? They were already kind of in the athletic market because they were you they were trying to come up with this technology for sports for advertising during sporting events, you know? So they're already in that venue. No pun intended. In that arena. Again, no pun intended. <laughs> um so someone just had the idea of like, hey, instead of using this technology to to put a an advertisement on everyone's television screen for a live broadcast what if we use this technology to just put a simple fucking line on the field and show people where they have to go for a first down and they did this Back, he he remembered it being around the '90s. Now, here's the thing: he he probably had been working on that technology during the '90s. Um, I'm not sure. I I read somewhere that it came out in the early 2000s, but I swear I remember that technology, the, that yellow line existing for as long as I've ever watched football. So, whatever. Um, but yeah, so he he worked for Princeton Video Imaging, and he even said like, "Yeah, we ended up winning an Emmy." For that freaking yellow line. And I looked it up and he was... It, it also tracks. Princeton Video Imaging won an Emmy Award for like... For like... Uh, I don't know. If, if it was like video graphics or video imaging something. Like it was a... I don't know if you guys know this, but there are like two different award ceremonies for the Emmys, for the Oscars. There's like the... Glitz and Glamour, famous one where for, for all the actors and directors and even like the people that score the music. And then there are the technical, they call it like the science awards where you get awards for like the technology behind things and whatnot, you know, even like special effects is still on the, um, the big show or whatever, but there are hundreds of awards that are on a side like award show and it's not even televised, but they do have a ceremony. And so he won, an, or his team won an Emmy uh, that year for for the, for something. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if I can look it up right now. But um, yeah, they won an Emmy as a result of their work on the yellow line. And of course, there was like a rivalry. Some other team was saying that they were developing the line at the same time. But I mean, one person, one team got the Emmy and one team did not. So yeah, I spent uh, a weekend with an Emmy award winner, I guess, is what, is what you can say. Person video imaging, yellow line Emmy. Let's just look that up. Let's see what happens. First and ten graphic system comes up right away. Yeah, Princeton Video Image receives technical Emmy for virtual technology. Yep. This comes up. Uh, Princeton Video Imaging, the global leader in virtual technology and imaging solutions for television, was awarded a technical Emmy by the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences for implementation of the real-time virtual imaging in live events on television. They're fucking talking about the yellow line. <laughs> the Emmy was presented to PVI at the Marriott Marquis Hotel in New York City on October 3rd, 2000, and that's exactly when our friend told us that they held it at the Marriott in Times Square. So, man, I, for a football fanatic like me, this sounds so dumb. Like, I'm sure Val was looking at me because she, I, you, I was starstruck. When I heard that story and, and when I heard all these details and, and I, I, my mouth was like on the floor, like I, my jaw was dropped, I should say. I was, and Val was looking at me like, really? Like, do you know what this is? This is a big deal. And I'm like, it's the yellow line. Yes. 
Yes, every man. Dude, if I if I ever introduced him to my friends, all I would have to say is like, dude, this guy invented the yellow first down line. And he would be in, dude, in every freaking gathering. It's funny because he's not really a sports guy, of course, because he's like a genius. But psh, every guy would be like, bro, you invented the yellow line? Get you're cool, you get over here, bro. You need a beer? Do you need something, man? I got you. Everything, everything in this house, bro, it's yours. You fucking invented the yellow line, bro. The yellow line. I woke up today and started watching football on Disney Plus. Because they have a fun day football where where the Jaguars and Falcons are being shown, but in Toy Story format, which I thought was out of this world. That's like where this technology has gone. We've gone from winning Emmys for yellow lines on the field to fucking the Falcons and the Jaguars are now in Toy Story form. Where Slinky the dog is now the first and ten marker. No longer is it a yellow line. <laughs> Technology is like advancing so fast. And now it, it, that's the future, you know? Earlier today, my girl asked me like if I, she has been, when she hints that she wants something, there's no subtlety. She just hammers me over the head with it. So I know she wants VR goggles. She wants like an Oculus. She wants something. You know how I know? Because I have a concussion from how hard she hammers it over my head. She's like, don't you think it would be fun, like like video games? I'm like, yeah, you play more video games than me. So, yeah, it would be fun for you. However, there is one thing that I do. Apparently, Resident Evil on VR is really awesome, so I'm down for that. But there's one thing that really made me like want VR goggles or whatever, the Oculus. Have you seen this thing? In the NBA, where you can use the VR goggles to watch a game from courtside, you can basically pretend you're sitting courtside and you have to turn your head left and right to look up and down the court because that because it's as if you're literally Drake sitting right next to the Toronto Raptors bench or something like that. That's what I want VR goggles for. I want to watch a Knicks game at home with these goggles on and feel like I'm watching on the, on the court. That's what I want. So I'm down for that. And and dude, can you imagine when they start doing that for like boxing or UFC? Or for me, man, I wrestling, WWE, they started doing that. That'd be awesome, man. That'd be awesome. I, th I might have to get VR goggles soon. But yeah, isn't that crazy, dude? I met th the one of the people responsible for the yellow line in football. That's something... Thank you, James. That we don't even think about, dude. We take it for granted. We as men take it for granted. There are some things we may take for granted in life, like, you know, women and family. But you know what we really take for granted in life is the yellow line in football. And I, I think that this moment here should serve as the moment for all men where we realize we stand up and stop taking things for granted. Stop taking the most important things in our life for granted all right so you look at your woman you look at your family and you tell them to step aside because today is about that goddamn yellow line you watch your football games this sunday okay you enjoy them knowing Every first down that has been achieved in every game and knowing that the reason why you know them is because of that yellow line. That yellow line didn't appear out of nowhere. It didn't just fall from the heavens, all right? It was conceived. 
it was perceived and it was designed all right it came from someone's head from someone's mind from someone's imagination They won a goddamn Emmy for it. That's all I got to say about that. Guys, thank you for tuning in once again. You know, the rain, not my drinking, the rain made me feel a little down, but recording this show, not my drinking, made me feel a little better. So I'm going to completely ignore every effect that drinking has on my emotions. I'm going to thank you guys for listening, but don't you go away before you do what you know you got to do, guys. Be sure to rate and review this show on Apple Podcasts. Follow me at I'm Will Bryant on all platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter slash X, TikTok, Twitch, Spotify, Threads, all that good stuff. That's three words. I'm Will Bryant, like Kobe. <laughs> this has been Big Kid with Will Bryant, the show where I ignore all my real problems and talk about stupid solutions. I'm your host. I'm Will Bryant. And until next time. 